Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. In this video I'm going to show you how to make cross lap joints and thick lumber like these pieces of 4x4 post. Cross laps, as you can see, are an interlocking joint made by cutting halfway through the depth of two pieces of lumber so that they can overlap one another on an even plane. In thinner lumber, these joints can be made with a router, but in thicker lumber, you need a different approach, so I'm going to show that in a moment. But first, I'll mention that I originally made cross laps like these when I was building a wedding arbor for a friend. You can see the arbor here. I made it out of 4x4 cedar posts, and I put those decorative overhangs and lift cuts on the ends. Came out looking really great, but since it was for a wedding service, I also had to be able to break it down and set it up very quickly. So I had to engineer a few things with the project just to make that possible. I actually wrote a short how-to ebook about the project because people seem to like it so much. That ebook is available on my website and on Amazon, so if you're interested in recreating this build, think about grabbing a copy. It's just a few bucks, and it has a lot of other information about lumber selection and cutting techniques, so you get a lot out of it. But getting on with our current topic, all you really need to make deep cross laps like these are a square, a circular saw, and a chisel. To begin the process, I just decide where I want my cross lap to sit on the pieces of lumber. In this case, it's about six inches in from the end. I use a speed square to mark a straight, perpendicular line at this point. But instead of trying to use measurements to lay out the second line, I actually like to use the piece of stock that I'm going to be joining. I line it up by eye with my first pencil mark, then use the other side as a guide to make my second pencil mark. And it helps to sight down on the piece from above when you do this, and you should scribe your line just a little bit wide of the 4x4 edge. These are the perimeters of our cross lap. But now we need to set our depth. So here I do use my tape measure to find the true center of the lumber stock, which is about an inch and three quarters in this case. And I put a little dash right there. I can then use this line to set my circular saw blade by eye, locking it in place at this exact depth. With all these marks set, we're ready to cut. I like to make my perimeter cuts first. Lining up the point of my blade tooth with the pencil line, I use my speed square as a guide for my saw. I can just push the edge of the sole plate up against the edge of the square. This keeps the saw perpendicular to the stock without that much effort, and I can run my cut straight through confidently. If possible, try to split your pencil mark right up the center. It takes a lot of precision, but it can be done. When the first perimeter cut is done, just repeat the same process for the other one. A quick check with the other piece of stock shows that it will fit cleanly inside the perimeter cuts that you've made. So, now we have to remove all the wood that's actually between these two cuts. To do this, I usually clamp the stock piece to a table for stability and just to free up both my hands. Without changing my blade depth at all, I carefully be begin making a series of cut passes through the stock, spacing the cuts about an eighth of an inch apart. I don't even use a speed square to do this, which is why my cuts start to become a little bit angled, but it doesn't really matter. The point is that I'm removing much of the wood quickly with a strong power tool. Just be careful doing it though. Keep your clothing out of the way and try to stand to the side of your saw a little bit in case it kicks back. It's easy to lose focus when you make a bunch of repetitive cuts, so pay attention, don't feel the need to rush. When all the cuts are made, you have this row of fillet strips standing up in place. And because I've made the cuts across the grain, these strips have almost no lateral strength to them at all, which means they can, they can be broken out with little effort. I sometimes do this with a hammer, or I just wedge a screwdriver in the last slot and crank it over sideways. It'll cause like a domino effect, and the pieces will generally just come out in one big clump. You can do a little bit more cleaning by prying the fillet bases that are still standing up, but to get a smooth floor to the joint, the best thing to do is just switch, switch over to a sharp one inch chisel. With the bevel facing upwards, I begin to push the chisel through the uneven material in a flat raising motion. It can help to push down on the chisel with two fingers also as you do this to create a bit more pressure. And you can flip the piece entirely to approach high points from the other side as well, cutting back towards the center. To be honest, I've never been that great with a chisel. Carpenters don't use them nearly as much as woodworkers do, but this method's pretty forgiving, and you can use a combination square to try to sight high points or unevenness in the floor of the cut where you may need to do just a little bit more work. You can also test your cross lap fit by passing a full piece of stock through it. If it feels too tight, use your speed square to make a saw pass along one of the cheeks of the cut, widening that side out just a bit. When the first cross lap is clean, just repeat all the steps with the second piece. Measure and mark for layout, set your perimeter cuts, 
make your freehand passes carefully, and then break out the excess material and clean the floor. When both cross laps are done, you get the satisfaction of sliding the two pieces together for a quick test fit. If their tops don't quite line up, feel free to do a little more chisel work on the floors at any high points, but once they do line up, you're all set. If you're making structural cross laps, you can permanently join these pieces with fasteners or adhesives. Or if you're making something mobile like my arbor, use the threaded rod technique from my ebook. It worked out really well and it made it very easy to get the pieces together and back apart again in a short amount of time. So that's how you make cross laps and thick lumber. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments. I always try to answer them. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe below. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.